Here's a Royal Enfield 500 Elector X and it's in the process of metamorphosizing into uh, ASBO number 41 and I thought I'm at a stage where it's a good time to make a, a quick video about this and discuss some of what I'm doing and what I have done and uh, already done is I've shortened the cylinder barrel by two millimeters height to push up the compression ratio uh, but also what I've done, what I've had to do, and I've done these before, um, I've had to machine the crown of the piston in this manner uh, where I've taken a couple of millimetres off the edge of the crown working inwards radially by about 10 millimetres or so. Um, now the effects and the reasons for that are dual fold. Firstly is when the piston's at top dead centre originally came up flush with the top of the liner and the thickness of the gasket, the head gasket, gave you your squish clearance because uh, there's flat areas there inside the combustion chamber which uh, meet face to face with the crown of the piston. So I wanted to um, reinstate that so that's why I've machined this here but also the reason that I didn't machine right across and make it flat again is that I also wanted to comp uh, increase the compression ratio. And what I've got there actually increases the compression ratio from the original 8.5 to 1 to around 9.2 to 1. So the purpose is there, as I've said, a dual fold. So I've got a nice squish area reinstated and I've increased the compression ratio by shortening the barrel and modifying the piston crown like that. So uh, that's all done and ready to go. Uh, but also, these engines and some of the others as well, the older older ones, the British ones, or at least some of them that I've seen, that drilling there, that this um, stud that fastens the tappet cover on, screws into, on some engines that hole goes right through into the crankcase, but on this type it doesn't. So what I've done is I've put a drill, slightly smaller diameter of course than this thread, so I didn't damage the thread there. I put a drill through and drilled through into the crankcase. Obviously I had the mouth of the crankcase stuffed with rags and I was very careful uh, to make sure no swarf got anywhere that it shouldn't have done. I stuffed small bits of rag in here as well to block off and protect this lot. Um, so I did it. If you're careful you can do it and uh, without stripping the engine. Uh, just take precautions to make sure the swarf doesn't go anywhere. But I drilled right through that into the crankcase and the reason behind that is so that should I wish to that's the end that goes into the uh, crankcase facing the crank assembly I can drill long ways through this I can drill a hole perhaps of around about four millimeters diameter not huge I know and I'll drill it along to about halfway along this hexagon section and then I'll drill a cross drilling through it to meet up with the hole going long ways uh, well nothing comes out the end and that can if you want to use it just give a little bit of extra crankcase breathing but into this part of the engine and of course it links up with the timing chest down there because there's oil drain holes there but more importantly uh, it connects up through the push rod tunnels up into the cylinder head and the rocker box area where it's quite easy should I wish to use a breather from there just to drill and fit some kind of fitting perhaps even a, a valve stem out of a inner tube or something into one of the rocker covers and have it breathing out to atmosphere or wherever and it's just an extra little potential outlet as a breather should it be needed but if it's not needed all that I need to do is either not drill this at all or if I have already drilled it and I don't want it is to just get another one undrilled and fit it and that closes the hole off but at least it's there should I decide I want to use it so that's an auxiliary breather if you like now, the next thing I'm going to do I've already got the exhaust valve out the cylinder head and I don't know how clearly this can be seen but the valve seats on these things often sort of protrude into the combustion chamber by quite a way. And I'm going to 
try and cut them back because the last thing you want, especially on an exhaust valve, is the edge of the valve seat sticking up sharply into the combustion chamber. So I'm going to get that cut back a little bit and it will also mean that I can uh, make the starting point of where the valve opens from further back and further away from the piston so it will give me all round a little bit more room for manoeuvre between the valves and the piston and uh, my cams and timings that I'm going to use and on top of that also the valves themselves the faces of them of the heads are perfectly flat across so what I'm going to do is I'm going to chamfer or bevel them so that that also will give a little bit more room, a little bit more clearance uh, because these can get quite close to the piston so I'll just chamfer them and you'd be surprised it's quite easy to take half a millimetre maybe more off the extreme edge there and that will make a massive difference to how close to touching the piston and the valve become uh, under the certain valve timings that may be used and the uh, cams I intend to use in this one will be the old Redditch S pattern which I found work really well and after doing a few engines like that I actually found that with the inlet cam retarded one mark off the timing marks they work even better so that's probably what I'll be doing with this one and it also just gets that um, the inlet valve a little bit further away from the danger area of the piston when it's going over the other top dead center where the exhaust valve is closing and the inlet is opening so I'll be chamfering the face of the inlet valve as well uh, to give us a little bit more room and possibly even reducing the diameter slightly I'll, I'll see see how much uh, seating we've got there but every little helps when you're uh, tuning like this um, and between what I've done there and the beveling or chamfering of the heads of the valves and possibly even reducing their diameters just a little will all give me a lot more room and uh, less to worry about so my next trick or job is going to be to clean these valves up and then modify them slightly and uh, that's where we are at the moment with it so all little things but little things together add up into bigger things and well worth doing so I just thought I'd discuss that one while we're uh, in the process of tuning this one and uh, hopefully when it's all done and there's more to talk about I'll make another video see you soon <laughs>